Hi, everyone, and welcome to The X, a podcast from inside Silicon Valley about how experience shapes everything from products to businesses to entire industries. I'm Brian McLean, and I'm here with Demetrius Madrigal. Today, we have a very special guest who we've talked about on the podcast before, Paul Scanlon, the co-founder and CEO of Legion M. For those of you who don't know, Legion M is the first ever fan-owned entertainment company. Legion M partners with top Hollywood creators, from independent filmmakers to big Hollywood studios, to produce movies, TV, digital content, and some that you might have heard of. Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, Mandy, Memory, The Origins of Alien, Colossal, The Man in the White Band, Save Yourselves, and the list just keeps going on and on. So full disclosure, for everyone listening, I am an investor in Legion M and have been since the beginning. The first time I saw the Legion M launch video, I was hooked on their new business model and got really excited to see them grow over the years. So with that said, let's jump in and get started. Good morning, Paul. How are you doing? Good morning. Great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us. This is a big treat for us. Uh, I wore my Legion M sweatshirt and uh, I'm ready to jump in and, 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 and dig into your company a little bit. I love it. Well, thank you for your support and enthusiasm. I mean, you know, this is that that's what Legion M is all about is uh, uniting uniting people together. Awesome. So, hey, um I know you've explained this a million times, but um for our listeners, um some of them may not have heard of Legion M except for when Demetrius and I had mentioned it on a on a previous podcast. Can you explain the origins of Legion M and then why specifically this company you wanted to start? Yeah, sure. So Legion M, well, we're the world's first fan-owned entertainment company. And what that means is we're literally an entertainment company, a movie studio, a movie and TV studio that's owned by fans. And we started it to be owned by fans from day one. Like 100% of our equity is owned by people like you that Mm -hmm. are excited about what we're doing. And um, our purpose and our mission is to redefine what it means to be a shareholder while also reshaping an industry that we love. And, um, you know, we're, we're uniting a vibrant and engaged community to, in a nice way, take over Hollywood. So, you know, we like to talk about, um, you know, the origin story of how this kind of came to be. My co-founder, Jeff Anderson and I have been working together for 20 years. We started another company, uh, with an, with another colleague, uh, way back in early 2000 that put TV on cell phones. And we had an incredible uh, rise and success with that, with that project and with that company, um, you know, three years after being told it was a terrible, the dumbest idea that Hollywood had <laughs> ever heard of, you know, we're on stage accepting an Emmy Award for technological advancement. And so, you know, we're here to, to disrupt again uh, and to do something that we think is, you know, worthwhile. Um, you know, a lot of people, when we describe our company or, you know, look at us and wow, you know, that's such a good idea. Why has no one ever done this before? Mm-hmm. And the truth is that, um, and this is getting to that origin story, uh, up until 2016, the whole idea, you know, the only way to go and do a, uh, fan owned entertainment company like that legally would be to take it publicly immediately, immediately on the NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange. And, you know, that's just a very high bar and a kind of, you know, unrealistic thing to do. And that's why no one had done it before. Um, but in 2016, the SEC redefined uh, and updated their securities laws so that the average investor, Main Street investor, can invest in startups. Uh, most people don't realize that up until 2016, even if your best friend or your brother or your you know, sister was starting a company and you wanted to invest in them, legally, the only people allowed to invest in startups were the top 3%, you mm-hmm. know, you, the wealthy elite. You needed to be what the SEC determined as an accredited investor, meaning you make either you know, $300,000 a year or you have more than a million dollars in, in net value, not including your home. Most people were locked out of startup investments. And if you look at our economy, it's driven by startups. I mean, yeah. you know, some of the biggest companies on the planet didn't exist 10 years ago and are, are startups. And, you know, those investment opportunities have been the domain of the wealthy elite uh, exclusively up until 2016. So when these new rules were made available, Jeff and I, as, as I mentioned, we, we had 
been involved in multiple companies together, uh, we saw a once in a lifetime chance to uh, to you know disrupt Hollywood, open the gates to Hollywood is what we call it. Um, you know, if you think of the entertainment industry is a hundred percent driven by fans. We buy the mm-hmm. tickets, we decide what to watch, we're the the reason why there's advertising, you know, we're the eyeballs and you know, everything. Um, but the fans have always been kind of on the outside of the industry. You know, the industry has been kind of exclusive. They'll tell you what they're gonna make and they'll tell you when and we just wanna flip that script and and try something new. So oh, and uh, redefine what it means to be a shareholder in the process. Yeah, which I think is super interesting part of it. And one of the things Demetrius and I had talked about in the past was that like there is no way to invest into a movie, right? Like kind of if you wanted to invest into a stock, right, you can be on E-Trade or if you wanted to invest into a startup company uh, and you happen to maybe work there, you can get shares or if you're an angel investor and things like that. But yeah, everything is kind of lock, locked up. But did you notice this opportunity while you were running uh moby tv and kind of thinking about hollywood and then it just the it just aligned with the fact that they opened it up or did the opening of that um new investor class you know create the idea yeah it's a it's a really great question actually when we look back at it i think it was the collision of these two things so one of the things that we recognized with with moby tv we were very successful uh, but we were a technology platform. We were aggregating content. And so we were beholden to the studios. We would be licensing ESPN or Disney and CNN and all these channels. Um, and what we recognize is that content is king. You know, mm-hmm. to be a technology platform is valuable. And, you know, Netflix went through the same, you know, uh, enlightenment, you know, and got into <laughs> content and started, yeah. you know, creating their own content. Um, and so I think it was the collision of that realization that, hey, you know what, technology is amazing, but, you know, in a hit driven business, being the content provider can be really, really valuable. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, these new securities laws were creating this profound opportunity to unite a community of people. In fact, I'm, I'm doing a TEDx talk on this very subject. Uh, at the end of May, May 30th, about the power of community. Because at the end of the day, you know, having, I mean, we raise venture capital and venture capital is amazing. Some of my best friends are venture capitalists. And I like that they are there to help spur and spawn creativity and innovation. You know, a lot of the technologies and the, the progress that we've made wouldn't be possible without venture capital. But with these new securities laws, you're getting venture capital money, you're getting your startup seed capital and, you know, effectively your series A, series B. But more than that, you're getting a community of people that are supporting you along the way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our goal is to unite 1 million people. You know, if you look at our logo, it's an M with a bar over it, um, which is a Roman numeral for 1 million. Legion M wants to be a community of 1 million people to take over Hollywood. And if you imagine, so right now, the average investor puts $300 in. Yep. The minimum investment's $100. Uh, we tell anyone considering investment, we're a startup. You know, the reason the SEC had, you know, these rules was that they didn't want people investing their life savings in startups because statistically, most <laughs> startups fail, yeah. right? So we tell anyone considering an investment, do not invest more than you can afford to lose. Uh, You know, the odds are absolutely stacked against us. We don't want anyone believing that this is a surefire bet. And that's why the minimum investment is only $100, right? So that's like, you know, gambling money. Uh, Now, of course, you know, people do invest more than that. um, But, you know, we we really try to encourage people to, you know, just recognize the risk. Now, we believe we could be one of those companies that defies the odds. Absolutely. That's why we're betting our careers you know, on this, on this opportunity, but we just want people to understand the risk. But so if you think of it at scale, we'll have raised three to $400 million from a million people, the average being three to $400 to invest in projects that have a built-in audience Mm -hmm. of a million plus people, you know, and I think it's, it's hard to argue that if we had that today, we wouldn't be one of the most influential companies in Hollywood. 
Oh, absolutely. And you see this already with um, Hollywood directors and things like that, that have huge followings just online, like whether it be on Twitter and things like that, they mm. mention about a movie, they mention about some new project that's coming out and suddenly they get huge fan engagement. You get a lot of reviews, you get people thinking about it, talking about it and spreading the word. You know, I, I, it's funny when you said a million uh, fans, the thing that came to mind was about 10 years ago, the CEO of Google had said, you know, one of my goals, I think it was about 10, maybe 15 years ago, said one of my goals is to have a million engineers working on amazing projects that change the world. Right. And I think they're about a quarter of the way there. And people thought they were crazy, but like, that's a big number, but it's also a big influence if you're doing something great. So I love, exactly. I love that you're doing that. I, I am very curious though, like how Hollywood in particular feels about what you're doing, because there's this old model of Hollywood that I think we all hear about, learn about, you know, kind mm -hmm. of see in movies, you know, you, you go out, you pitch your stuff, you know, you hope that they, the studio picks you up. Well, you're really shaking that up. And like, how do they respond to this new kind of movement? Yeah, I mean, it's a really good question. I mean, we have been really surprised at the reaction, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, we were expecting, just like we had with Moby TV, you know, we had a lot of resistance with Moby TV, um, including some executives that told us it was the stupidest thing they'd ever seen, which <laughs> who later became our friends and dedicated the rest of their career to, you know, TV outside the room <laughs> on cell phones and everything else. And so... You know, what I would say is that, you know, the industry, there is a part of the industry that is still kind of scratching their heads, wondering, like, what, what, what are they doing? <laughs> you know, but then there's the other part of it. Like, I just got off a phone call uh, this morning for a movie that we haven't announced yet. And they're absolutely getting it. They yeah. and, you know, the nice thing about Legion M, we always say, like, you know, disruption can take a lot of different forms. There are disruptors like Napster mm -hmm. that can be very negative for an industry and kind of put them, set the industry back. Maybe it's good for, you know, the audiences and for consumers, but, you know, the industry had to sort of build back from a, a huge setback. The nice thing about Legion M is we add value. We're not mm -hmm. taking anything away. We're actually, you know, one of the things that Hollywood is beholden to their built-in audiences. And that's why we have a lot of franchises and a lot of sequels and reboots and, you know, all these things, which are fine and good and amazing. And that's when, you know, if you're owned by Wall Street, that's what you have to stick to because your built-in audience is for that franchise. It's not for your company and anything you, the company decides to do. And mm -hmm. the company's listening to fans and doing things that the fans want. You know, what we're creating with Legion M is an opportunity for the industry to make bets on new franchises, but have this safety net of the built in audience, you know, supporting it and to pre vet those ideas so that we know we're, you know, when we do introduce something that we're not coming out of left field and surprised when, you know, the audiences don't love it. Yeah. And, you know, uh, recently Demetrius and I had done a podcast on this and talked about how Hollywood is really looking at, you know, streaming and they're looking at like big data, helping them make decisions about films, you know, kind of like Film Scout, what you're doing, where it's like, I want to kind of crowdsource people's opinions and ideas so that we can have a better chance of, of being successful at this particular film. And one of the things that we noticed was that um, Sylvester Stallone had done an interview recently and said, I really do not think that Rocky would have been made today. If I went and knocked at Universal or any of these places and said, I want to make this film, it's called Rocky and all that, because it doesn't fit in the model you're describing of Hollywood focusing mostly on franchises. But now that you are coming in, Legion M is coming in and, and potentially some others, do you see a greater opportunity for younger filmmakers, independent films, great stuff from Sundance Film Festival, where you can grab that content and then kind of get it out to your fans, but also beyond that? Absolutely. I mean, this is, this is literally, I mean, we're very mission oriented. Like, you know, we are with Legion M, we're, you know, uniting this community together as a movement. We want to be a movement and a force of change in an industry. And that change can be hearing from new voices, wildly original new franchises, taking bets. You know, Hollywood's a hit-driven business. And because of that, 
you know, it's a, it's like gambling in a little, and to, you know, you make the best bet that you can, you get the best cast, the best director, you know, you get the writing, but ultimately when you put it out, you just don't know. And you're hoping, yeah. you know, and you're hoping that it hits and it, you know, things align. And we want to change those, that calculus. We want to change the calculus to, and you know, if you imagine like if you go to Vegas and you're mm-hmm. gambling in Vegas, you don't need to change the odds that dramatically for it to be, really worthwhile right and the same is true in in hollywood i mean we we tell people because you know uh investing in movies is a risky business you know it's it's risky but it can be de-risked with the right model and that's what we're that's what we're focused on is how do we change the odds for success and then how do we add value to an industry by being the the propagator the instigator for new franchises and to hear from new voices. I mean, we're, you know, if you look at a lot of our projects, they're exactly that. You know, Colossal, when it first came out, that was our first project that we did. Nacho Vigalando's Colossal with um, uh, Jason Sudeikis. Uh, that movie was described as wildly original. You know, this <laughs> is a movie that, you know, the studio execs would look at and go, what? You know, like, but fans loved it. And, mm-hmm. and you know, the movie is stands you know it it, it it stands the test of time i mean it's an yeah. amazing movie yeah but so yeah these are the these are the things that we're we're seeking to change and you know and and we're we're here to add value in in that direction so i'm curious about the pitch so for example um you were saying you know you were talking with someone on the phone earlier or whatever about a new movie right one of the things that our listeners don't have insight into, but everybody wants insight into is what does it really take to do that? Like you are thinking, okay, I think we need another, another film on our docket. Right. And you Mm -hmm. want to go through that process. Can you give us kind of the inside scoop of what that process looks like? Are you calling studios? Are you pitching ideas? Are filmmakers coming to you? Like what does that experience look like from a, from a kind of day-to-day operation standpoint? It's a, it's a really good question. And, you know, the answer is a little, um, you know, there are, there are a couple different ways. So it's not one, it's not like one pathway where things come into Legion M, but, um, so I'll, I'll describe a couple of them, but I want to preface it with everything we do, we do with our community in mind. So we're constantly, Cure, like under trying to understand what our community is interested in and whenever <laughs> possible we go out to our community we just did an impulse um earlier this week impulse is our opportunity Every, anyone in our community can give us their feedback on not only the movies that we've already done but movies that we might be doing directors and talent and casts that they really like we're you know we we test log lines there so <laughs> when we we have at any one point in time, when we started the company, we were really, you know, it was when we were just getting going, it was harder. Now we have we have way access to way more projects than we can possibly do. Everyone is bringing their projects to us. You know, we're we're also looking out using some of our scouting uh, platforms, and we have something that we're going to be introducing uh, in May. I'll give you a little sneak peek uh, about it. Uh, we have a reading club that'll be coming out uh, oh, nice. uh, next month, which I think is going to be amazing. Uh, we've done a little bit of this before and, you know, we are, we do option books and book series uh, to turn them into, you know, a television series or a, um, or a movie franchise. Uh, and we want to do more of that. Um, but what, what we do is we're always trying to get, the feedback and insight from our community. You mentioned Film Scout earlier mm-hmm. uh, in the podcast. That's another part of our platform that is designed to identify the best films at film festivals. But it's also a fun game. It's like playing fantasy sports. For, yeah, <laughs> you know, film buffs. Uh, so our community has fun. We rank everybody. We have you know elite scouts in our community. Those elite scouts actually because they've now proven over the course of multiple seasons of Film Scout that they have their finger on the pulse of what the community wants. So the way Film Scout works is, you you know, we put all the films from a film festival in there and everyone goes in and decides, okay, so if they, if they, you know, you're basically reviewing the film for 
what your interest is, but you're also predicting as a mm-hmm. film scout, as a film, you know, acquisition executive, how would you predict are these viable commercially? And then, of course, if you go to the film festival, you can write a review so we can start predicting what the Rotten Tomato scores are. Um, all that data is so valuable to us because mm-hmm. it tells us not only what our community is interested in, it also helps us identify who in our community really knows what the public is, you know, good mm-hmm. at. And so now we have, you know, a subset of our community that is, you know, that we can go to when we when we have uh, questions that we don't want to put out in a in a public manner. We can we can ask them, or if we get a screener, or we could invite them to look at and 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 read a script. So there's all this data. So and and I think that was my preface. I want to make sure that you know everything we do. We want to do it like we're only as good as how well we pick these projects. Mm-hmm. Because if we're not representing our community, then people will lose interest and, you know, uh, go away. So we have to, you know, we have to do a good job there. Now, as far as the projects, you know, we have a lot of our own industry contacts and movies being pitched to us all the time. Um, we also have projects that have come to us from our Legion community, Man in the White Van. Uh, Warren Skeels, the director and writer of that film, is a Legion yep. M investor. Yep. And um, he happened to know Terry. They went to college together. Um, and so he was, you know, he had this pretty cool project. Uh, our, right around that exact same time, so we knew we had this true crime drama uh, or true crime thriller um, script. We had a financier that was interested in in looking for thrillers. And our community had just told us that they wanted true crime. It was a genre that we hadn't done yet. So we triangulated in on that and said, okay, well, let's, let's, let's flesh this out a little bit. Let's read the script. Let's work on this with Warren. Let's get the financier to the table. And now we have a movie that we're, you know, then we went through the casting and everything else. Sean Astin, Ali Larder, Madison Wolf, and uh, that movie we're, we're in post-production on it now. That's awesome. Yeah. That one looks really good. I saw that Sean Astin was in there and I was like, wow, that's, that's a nice name to land. You know, he's, he's really yeah. doing well right now. Um, yeah. I, I see, I see something going on here and correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, you're, you're a, a Silicon Valley guy, but you're also in Hollywood now. And what I'm seeing is, is I'm seeing the, the kind of Hollywood movie production side evolving with Legion M, but I also see the tech side starting to build up. <laughs> and so I, I, I suspect that you're kind of also looking at this data and some of these um, some of these apps and these things that you're developing to to assist the community. They also are very valuable as a general understanding of kind of how people think their sentiment and what's going on in the industry itself. A- am I am I kind of reading between the lines you're here? Absolutely that- right. Yeah, there's no coincidence there. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a deliberate thing, and it's part of the reason why Jeff and I are up in Northern California. And, you know, the main uh, team is down in L.A. We want we deliberately want Legion M to not be a pure Hollywood company and it's not mm-hmm. a pure technology company. It's a mashup of those two things, uh, because we really feel like, you know, Legion M, you know, when we look at it as a whole, one of the most important components of it is the platform. And the platform is our the technologies that we develop and the techniques that we develop that allow us to effectively harness the insight and wisdom that we have access to. So one part of it is growing this community, but if we're only growing the community and then not really, you know, harnessing its power, Mm -hmm. um, the power to, you know, to provide insight before we, you know, develop and choose a project, but also the power you know, obviously when we release a project, we have yeah. a part of our platform called the meetup maker. So when we're releasing movies, you know, our community can, can host a meetup where other investors come together on opening weekend. And we can really drive box office sales using this because everyone loves going to the movies, especially if you're an investor in that movie and you've been along for the ride when we cast and went through this whole experience, you know, you're a part of helping create this movie and now you can create your own experience where you're meeting other investors 
everyone's bringing friends and family. You know, some of our meetups, our release meetups, will literally sell out theaters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Just that's awesome. Legion M. I mean, can you imagine how how valuable is that? I mean, we want to get to a point where, you know, our our bottom line, like the worst case scenario, is we break even just with our own community watching the movie. Mm-hmm. And the best case scenario is, you know, beyond anything, beyond, you know, the upside that we would have had without a community. Yeah. And, sp- and speaking about like movie theaters and things like that, obviously the pandemic created a, 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 a rapid acceleration of people really, really wanting to consume content from streaming services and in their home. And we already saw that trend. You're very familiar with all this, you know, as it's been trending since 2010. But then with the movie theaters kind of shutting down or slowing down drastically like that, how has that affected your decision making when it comes to picking uh, films or TV series or or even trying to option other things like The Girl With No Name and that kind of stuff? Like, how does it change your your, your thinking? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And it, and it absolutely did. I mean, we saw the writing on the wall. Um you know, even even before the pandemic, we were we were already edging toward TV. You know, movies. And we're we're always going to do movies, and there's always a space for movies. But you know, we had said from the get go that we want to be doing movies, TV series, and you know, other forms of entertainment ultimately. But right now, you know, the the best place for us to start was independent independent film. We could get in there. We had a lot of relationships, Tim League and the neon guys and Alamo and all this. And, you know, that's been amazing. Um, Right before the pandemic, we had announced a a handful of TV series. um, And one of them was really big and uh, ambitious. Actually, a couple of them or all of them are ambitious. (laughs) Um, We repositioned it as an animated series because, and when we started pitching it, We realized that, oh, wait a minute, you know, because of the pandemic, it's going to be hard for, you know, a big cast to get together and shoot a live action movie um, or a live action series. Uh, And so we we repositioned it as an animated series and then we sold it. So we've already sold and it's in, you know, production. Well, it's in writing uh, the writing phase right now. Um, So we haven't been able to release the details on that yet. Um, unfortunately we wish we could, but we're under NDA with the buyer, the streamer that bought it. Uh, what they have allowed us to say is that we've, we've sold a, a a series, an animated series to a major streamer. Um, and it's an amazing deal for Legion M like, and it's a, it's a, it's a icebreaker for us to do more TV. Uh, because now with this, you know, in our, in our slate and as part of our track record, we want to do more of it. And this is why we're, you know, looking at doing the reading room and our relationships with other buyers is really developing. And um, yeah, I think, I think movies will always play a role, but I think TV series have been, you know, uh, a bright spot for the industry. I mean, let's be honest, like some of the TV series are better than movies, right? They're so yeah, good. They You're so dialed yeah. into them. You know, all of us have our favorites, but their their production value is is very, very high. And one of the things that uh, Demetrius and I had noticed was that <clears throat> Apple TV and some of the other, uh, other providers, as they started to come into the market and really kind of have an impact, there's been a lot more work for actors. Right, so there's a lot more opportunity, and then also I noticed that they started building more studios in in Hollywood and Vancouver and other areas to kind of keep up with this demand. Do you see this as just a pure amazing opportunity for the timing of your business, or does it actually make it more challenging because there's more competition and you know I mean for people's eyeballs? I would say I would say it's the former. I mean it's absolutely you know a heyday right now. I mean it, there's a lot of buyers. I think, you know, even with the 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 kind of um, recent news at Netflix, mm-hmm. I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing. I mean, no. what what it what it means is that Netflix isn't the only buyer that matters. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of buyers yeah. that matter, and I think that that opens the floodgates for Legion M. You know, and if you look at you know some of these um, you know the values that that 
that the industry is putting on some of these companies like Hello Sunshine yeah. uh, or A24 just got an investment at a very high valuation. What it tells you is that the content matters and the companies that have a track record of creating content. And that's squarely the space that Legion M is in. You know, we're, we're this sort of in this kind of undefined category because we are very much entrenched and we are creating content, but we also have this really compelling technology component of it. That's not yeah. Netflix, but it's, it's unique that, you know, today no one else has, um, that I think makes us even, even more valuable ultimately. I mean, we still have a long way to go. You know, Legion M is, uh, we're still, you know, a startup, we're still mm -hmm. proving ourselves, but, you know, I teach a class on, um, on entrepreneurship for Northwestern Kellogg, awesome. uh, just one class a year yeah. uh, in the winter semester. They come out from Evanston uh, to take classes out here in Silicon Valley, I guess, or in San Francisco downtown. Yeah. And I always tell the students, you know, typically as an entrepreneur, you'll never be more bullish about your company than the day before you start it. <laughs> and then that week that you get into it, you're like, whoa, all right, this is going to be hard. And you hit reality and you start realizing, you know, how much harder it is to start a company. But one of the one of the exciting things that I like to talk about with Legion M is that we are way more bullish about it now than we were. Like when we started, we we were excited about it, but we were nervous. You know, we just didn't know. And Jeff and I like to take chances. So we put it out there and we said, you know, hell or high water, let's go do this and see what happens. And now we're, you know, five plus years into it. And we're just, I mean, it's, we're so excited. You know, we still, like I said, we still have a long way to go, but we really feel like we've proven something like mm -hmm. so much that I feel like Legion M is the first, one of the early incarnations of a wave of new types of companies, yeah. community oriented companies that are owned by a community of people that can be supportive and helpful. And I, you know, I think that's really powerful. I mean, that's what my TEDx talk will be, be about is, you know, I think communities, the power of global digital communities are potentially one of the most powerful tools on the planet for yeah. affecting change. Yeah. And if you think of it, like, and if you look through history, it's always been that way. But now more than ever, you know, we talk about the democratization of, you know, all these components and the shared economy, sharing economy and all these things they are all converging at once. And now it's possible for, you know, people like me and Jeff to go unite our own community. It's not just, you know, it used to be the, the royalty, you know, they were in charge of the community. But that le that playing field has been leveled. Anyone can go start a community now yeah. and grow it. And and you know, I I remember early on when you guys uh, one of your investor meetings, you were talking about how you know you'd walk into these meetings and you'd pitch and you'd have to really explain to them what you're doing, like in many different ways. Normal startup pitching, right? You're like, here's what we're doing, here's why we're doing it, right? Has that changed over the last five years? Like, do you feel like people better understand? where you're going with it. Because early on, I understood where you're going with it. But my only thought in my head was, is like, how do you convince these actors and things like that, that your mission is something they should link their time and energy into? So do you feel yeah. like now it's, uh, you're, you're not that you're better at it now, but like, well, maybe you are better at it, but I'm just saying like, <laughs> do you are, feel yeah. like it's, 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 it's easier, let's say, to walk into a meeting and make that happen? Well, I think, you know, it's, it's a really good, it's a really good point. And when I think about it, uh, I think we have absolutely honed our message um, so it's clearer. I think the other the other element that's been really beneficial is a lot of times, like a, a much higher percentage of the time, the people that we're talking to have already heard about us and they've already been, someone has already pitched them about it, yeah. told them <laughs> about it, you know, or they heard about it on your podcast or read about it in the LA Times, wherever. Right. So and that adds value because now you're not starting from a cold start. You know, you've got a warmer audience. I mean, the case in point is um, William Shatner. Yeah. You know, we he recently joined our advisory board um, and that process was really interesting because uh, David Baxter, uh, our VP of development, he and I um, 
ran into William Shatner in the green room at uh, Silicon or uh, Silicon, they call it. It's Silicon Valley Comic Con. Uh, you guys may have been there. Yeah. Um, I mean, you just randomly ran into William Shatner. Well, we were, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think David knew he would be there. But like, yeah, yeah we ran him. <laughs> we were literally in this big room because it was for, you know, speakers only. So yeah. it wasn't like out on the show floor. Um, he was sitting at a table by himself. And we approached really cautiously because the last thing we want to do is just be annoying. Oh, absolutely. And we yeah, figure yeah. he's he's been you know, um, interacting with people all day. And he looked like he was just, you know, trying to catch some rest and, and relax and be left alone. Uh, so we were real sensitive. David had a connection to him and had met him on the set of another movie. And so, you know, he, he went over, we introduced our, ourselves and, you know, Shatner sitting here with his arms crossed and like, like everything about his body language was, I really don't, <laughs> want to talk to you guys right now. yeah and and you know david said hey i just you know i know um we, we, we won't bother you but i just want i just want you to hear about our company and you know paul my colleague will introduce it and so i start to describe it to him and literally within the third sentence he's leaning forward he's listening and his arms aren't mm. crossed anymore and he's smiling and it was just this total, and now he's completely engaged in the conversation. He's asking me really smart questions. And, you know, he finishes it, you know, he, he didn't want to talk. He's like, okay, I'm really interested in what you're doing. I think that sounds amazing. Um, I'm going to, and here's a number, call this number and let's set up a phone call. And so then we had a phone call, we had another meeting and, you know, he just got more engaged and more engaged. And now we have, I mean, we still have um, some announcements uh, to make. I mean, we announced that he joined our advisory board, but that's the tip of the iceberg. Um, and and that was just something that he was, you know, he asked a lot of good questions um, about, the, he doesn't want to just get involved with anyone, and, you know, who knows what, what kind of people we are. And so he wanted to get to know us and talk to people that knew us and, once he felt comfortable, then, you know, he joined and now it's been amazing. We have this really collaborative relationship. He wrote a, an op-ed on why he thinks Legion M is such an interesting company. Yep. And to be honest, we're not paying, it's not like Priceline where, you know, like he's our <laughs> spokesperson and we're paying him. Yeah. He's getting involved because he believes in what we're doing and he believes that it's, that it's a worthwhile thing for him to spend his time on. Uh, and he's getting a little bit of equity in the company, but that's it. And it's yeah. funny. He was, you know, he wasn't, you know, greedy about it or anything. He's just like, okay, let's do this. I'm excited. Well, I mean, when you when you pitch the idea of like a fan owned company like that, and and getting people engaged and excited about opportunities, I feel like it's kind of a no brainer, especially if you guys are doing this super hard work of really delivering these cool movies and 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 films and experiences like that, and you know, I see, I see a lot of change happening. I did have this one question and Demetrius, um, hopefully can kind of jump in on this is that, uh, you've worked with Kevin Smith before. Yeah. And I don't know if you've noticed, uh, or heard recently that Kevin Smith is releasing kind of this new way of, I don't know, like sharing his content with an, with NFTs. Mm -hmm. And so like yep. people kind of like own the rights to do things with the content after they have kind of committed to ownership of that. And I was wondering what your thoughts are of bringing that kind of new type of technology to a kind of traditionally um, kind of older way of thinking the way Hollywood works and functions. Like, do, do you feel like they, they just jump right in and accept that stuff? Or do you feel like this is just the beginning of, of a new movement? You know, I'd say, I mean, I would say that I do, I feel like it is the beginning of a new movement in Legion M. We will absolutely, you know, utilize NFTs and mm -hmm. various different formats. And we do, we see it as having a valuable contribution and the blockchain as well. We've been, Jeff and I don't, we don't like just jump on trends because yeah. they're trendy yep. and we want to be careful. And, you know, the first time that the crypto you know, trend came around, we, we were really like wondering, like, are we missing out on something? But at the same time, we don't want to be, you know, w we want to be clean, well lit, you know, yeah. we want to, we want everything to be 
you know, we want to be SEC compliant. We wanted, you know, we just wanted all those things. We weren't ready to bet the company on something that had, mm-hmm. you know, some risk factors. We have enough risk factors. Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> um, but, you know, increasingly, you know, so now we're at a point where we don't need to bet the company on these things, but we can explore them. And we yeah. absolutely are. We just brought on a consultant um, that's going to be helping us with this. And, and our uh, VP of uh, merchant licensing has been going really deep. Jeff and I have been taking a lot of meetings. We've also, because it's so important to us, been polling our community mm-hmm. to find out, hey, is this something that you want us to do? Is it something that, you know, do you buy NFTs today? And so we have all this data now from our community about, you know, their their interest level, but also, you know, what they've done with crypto and NFTs and everything else um, so that we can, when we do do something, we can do it informed by this, by this data. But I do feel like it's inevitable. Like, I do think it can be a valuable contributor. You know, like I said, we're not going to bet the farm on it so that sure. if it does turn out to be, you know, just a, a blip and, you know, things evolve uh, beyond it where we're not, you know, stuck. But at the same time, it, it feels like um, we like a lot of the value and yeah. the um, and the, the, just like what you said, it's it's another way of bringing fans into the development and release and and monetization of content. Yeah. And one of the things that um, I was doing that I was going to share with you is that I was listening to uh, Kevin Connolly's Action Park Media. You know, he has a podcasting company, Mm -hmm. right? In Hollywood. And they are partnering with uh, Mark Cuban and Fireside Chat and like trying to do some stuff with NFTs for uh, Doug Allen, who created um, Entourage. He's um, trying to figure out a way to kind of weave those things in and kind of create some fan engagement around that, which is, it made me think a lot about you guys and how like I'm seeing it there. But what I'm actually getting at is that there's little whispers of these new ways of thinking about fan engagement, new ways of thinking about connection and ownership with fans. And because I keep hearing these little bits here and there, I'm starting to feel like maybe you guys had a big influence on kind of like changing the process. And now with the new technology kind of evolving, there's a new ways to excite the fans. And one of the things I did do is I actually went and looked as a side note at all the comments of when this was announced with Action Park Media. And mm-hmm. they've got hundreds of thousands of you know people that, that listen to these podcasts. And there were so many comments that were like, we're in, like, we want to be part of this. We want to kind of own our own token, you know, so we could say that we're part of this movie. And, and I saw that excitement and I thought to myself, okay, it's moving. The ball is rolling down the hill. And I, I wanted your take on it because I feel like you guys were the ones that started this for real. Yeah. Like five years ago, this was, you guys were the ones that started this process. Well, I, I appreciate that. And, you know, we, we want to be one of the starters. We also be want to be one of the finishers. And, <laughs> you know, we feel like all boats rise, you know, like yeah. I mean, we, we are excited by, you know, all the development. We really feel like we have maybe broken the seal a little bit on, on this and, and gotten, you know, people, I think crowdfunding had like non-equity, but just regular crowdfunding had started it. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't, it didn't really get to the sort of mainstream end to the level of, you know, the premium content, um, mm-hmm. you know, where, where you're literally, you know, talking to the creator of Entourage, you know, like, yeah. and, and, and people like that are paying attention to it. I think that's, that's really exciting because it's when we first started, not only did we have to explain it to everybody, but there were certain individuals, you know, that were just a little bit afraid of it. You mm-hmm. know, they, they felt like, Oh, well, you know, I don't want to be crowdfunding. And we we're like, no, no, don't, we get that. You know, we're not crowdfunding. We're equity crowdfunding, mm-hmm. crowdfunding our donations to, you know, I mean, crowdfunding has a place too, and it's valuable, but a lot of celebrities don't want to be, you know, crowdfunding because it feels like you're asking for donations, you know, yeah. but now, you know, the way, and we have some exciting things that we'll be announcing, you know, over the course of the next couple months and throughout the rest of the year related to, you know, when you invest in Legion M, you're investing in the company, right? Mm-hmm. So you're investing in a startup, that company, that company, the startup is going through this process where we're trying to create value in the company. But each one of our projects 
is another opportunity by, by investing in the company, you own a little piece of everything we do. Yeah. But there's also this opportunity to, if you want to invest more in a specific project, you know, we want to make that happen. We want to allow people to do that. That might happen. You know, you could invest alongside of us or you invest. Um, and so we, anyway, we have a we have a series of things that we'll be introducing. That's exciting. Uh, and and we've been pulling our community on like, well, what's their interest level in doing that? Um, yeah. And and we're getting good, good responses. So, yeah, no, that's that's super exciting to hear, because I think that's the next level of it. Right. Is that if, if fans and are some super of them engaged, might have and... some pretty big names attached to them. You never yeah. Know. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> I've been wondering if, you know, I, I had purchased the uh, the girl with no name and uh, my son and I were reading it. And I was curious if, um, you know, whether you can share it or not, is it if that will move into a potential series or, or feature or something in the future, because I think it has a lot of potential. Yeah, no, that project, I mean, it's been, um, you know, all projects take a long, like take, I mean, one thing about Hollywood is it moves really slowly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it, it's funny because I comment, you know, being more sort of Northern California oriented. Uh, I did study film in college. So, yeah. you know, uh, but I cannot believe how slow it moves. It is maddening. You know, it's just one of these things. Yeah. And because Silicon Valley moves quickly. Oh, yeah. You know, people, I mean, people are responsive. If you're not, I think there's this um, this sense of um, urgency in Silicon Valley that that is hard to get. I mean, it does exist in certain places in Hollywood, but you have to create it. Because it's yeah. the normal, when we first started the company, uh, we met with Guillermo del Toro. He invited oh, us nice. to his house. Yeah, oh. it was he invited us to his house on a Sunday afternoon. Literally, he had heard about the company, thought it was really cool, <laughs> knew one of our other advisors. He said, uh, he reached out and, and said, hey, you know, you guys want to come over and, you know, drink some tea in the afternoon. On a Sunday afternoon, we went over wow. to his house, his bleak house <laughs> in, in L.A., which is where he keeps all of his movie memorabilia. And he has his writing room where it's raining all the time. and thunderstorm. I mean, it is like that by itself was a mind blowing experience. But Guillermo, be, you know, and he literally just wanted to meet with us and and give some advice, you know, and tell us that he was excited about about what we we're doing. And um, his parting words were, just remember. In Hollywood, nothing moves forward unless <laughs> you make it move forward. And it, and it was really good advice. I mean, it was yeah. basically, you know, objects and rest stay in rest objects in motion move and and stay in motion and you know it's it's one anyway i'm, I'm it's a long answer hollywood you got to create your urgency um girl with no name is absolutely we're working on it actually there's yeah. amazing stuff we haven't shared anything uh recently but we have uh we we've cast the girl uh oh, nice. really um yeah the the lead that's going to play the girl we're really excited to uh, announce and we're we're talking to a few others just to nail down the rest of the cast and then we want to then we'll take it out for for financing but you know there's a lot of, there's a lot of excitement about that project and and you know um westerns you know, especially like an interesting new take on westerns mm -hmm. that's a trend right now it's uh i think when we first started that project not so much you know we had a lot of resistance to mm -hmm. like oh westerns you know but um but now, you know, with some of the recent successes in that genre, um, you know, where it's perfect time. So yeah, everything, no, it's, it's been slower than we wanted, but it's coming. Yeah, no, it's, it's exciting. I'm, I'm exciting about all, uh, excited about all this stuff. I, I know you have many other things to do, so we don't want to take up a ton of your time on this. Um, just had a couple, couple, few questions here. Yeah, no worries. Um, so as technology has evolved and you see people using like their iPhones and their GoPros and, and YouTube and all that kind of stuff, how do you think that's going to fundamentally change filmmaking over the next five years? Because right now it's getting cheaper and easier and, and, and simpler for creative people to make the things that they want to make and get them out there. Absolutely. Oh, it's funny because I, I feel like you teed that up for me because literally... <laughs> Just yesterday, we introduced something uh, just to our community. We haven't made a public announcement about it yet, but it's called Legion of Comedy. Mm -hmm. And we're, this is a, um, 
a television series, an unscripted television series that we're developing with National Lampoon. It will be a sketch comedy competition show. And so this is exactly, it's basically going out to the world that is so creative and has access to so many tools to submit their content. You know, if you look at the volume of usage on TikToks and YouTube and, you know, content that isn't produced by major studios, it's mm-hmm. absolutely massive. And yeah. there and it's very entertaining. And so we want to create we want to kind of merge these two worlds and something uh, that will be an app. Um, and and the other component about this format that we're really excited about is it makes sense for Legion M to do something like this because we already have a community of creators and mm-hmm. reviewers and people that will give feedback. So the way it works is we'll put out, we'll go out um, to the communities at large, even beyond our community and solicit submissions. So submissions get put into the app and within the app, you're, you're watching and reviewing content uh, kind of like what we sort of unconsciously are doing on TikTok, right? How long <laughs> you watch something, whether you, you know, whether you uh, swipe up uh, determines and when you swipe up, how often did you watch it twice? Did you share it? All these things are, they're data, they're data that tells the the algorithm, oh, this is the content that people like or that mm-hmm. is better. Um, we're going to use a platform like that, our own platform, where we're going to aggregate this content, let the community tell us what what works. We're going to bring on um, uh, like a host or probably two hosts, a pair, um, to do a competition show. And then I love if your submission gets selected, then you come on the show, you work with other comedians to develop your next thing. And if you can stay on the show, I mean, we're, you know, I won't go into all the details, but we just put that out yesterday to our community to say, hey, you know, who should we ask to host the show? And so our community, I mean, I, I don't even even look today, but I'm sure we have hundreds of suggestions from our community and we can start to see, or actually, I'm sure we have thousands by now, but we'll start to see, all right, what are we getting multiple requests for? Who, who, like, who are some of the common denominators? Then it, uh, it, when we're casting the show, we have data and we can go out to, you know, Keenan Thompson and say, mm-hmm. hey, you know, uh, we thought you'd be a great, you know, host of this show. But when we put it out to our community, they're the ones that told us you should be hosting this show. And so now we have this added element where, you know, when you're talking to, you know, his or her agent, whoever it is, that's a, that's really valuable for them to know that not only you know, or are they wanted by us, but our community is wanting them as well. So that is like the perfect use case for especially our podcast, because I feel like you described specifically like how you're using the data in order to, to kind of sell, you know, these actors on the idea and the film or the, or the show or whatever it is you're doing. And they can look at it and say, oh, so people already want me to do this. So I should definitely consider you know, looking at it or thinking about it. And that is a total reversal to them coming to you and saying, let me show you some clips of what I've done. I'm going to pitch you on, on me being the host Mm -hmm. because you already have the data on that. So that's amazing. I mean, I, I feel like we're still going to go through the casting and we'll probably still, you know, um, have them do readings and, you know, but, but as far as, I mean, if you think of it, how many comedians are out there, right? I mean, how many people could we potentially go to for hosts? You know, and what's really nice is we are involving our community. We want them to have a vote. So and it's real easy. So we introduce the project. So they first of all, they just heard about the project yesterday. Mm-hmm. And now they have this opportunity to suggest a host. All that, and we're already talking to potential hosts, but with all that data, it's just going to, you know, make those conversations smoother. And ultimately, you're de-risking, like you talked about before. And I guess one of my questions was, is that when you're talking about de-risking, um, I was thinking about how like your company hasn't taken any venture money, correct? Like like a, from a traditional venture capitalist, right? I'm not sure if you're planning on doing that in the future or anything, but th- I'm just going to point something out. So the fact is that we have all of all of the fans, and that's including myself, investing in 
and kind of de-risking everything to a point where if you ever did want to make a huge investment, for, uh, take a huge investment from a venture cap firm or something like that, because you want to double down, triple down on on your films or whatever it is, you're actually going into that pitch kind of the same way that you're using uh, your fans right now to help you figure out what the films are and saying, my fans are de-risking, my investors are de-risking your risk on this. So now's the time to, to take the plunge and make the investment, right? Like I, I see so many ways to kind of cut this data. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, what I would say is, you know, first of all, we are open-minded. Uh, yeah. to, we haven't pursued it. Yeah. Um, and mostly just because we're, we're authentic, community owned and any if we did take in any outside money we have had some big studios and you know stuff like that you know talk about ideas but nothing like formal and nothing that we would that seemed fair to our community and that's our first priority you know so anyone that would come in has to understand that they're investing in something but they can't be you know, diametrically opposed to the community. They have to oh, be yeah. behind, like uh, the idea is that the community comes first. And, you know, and that's a, that can be a hard thing, you know, especially with venture capitalists. Oh and, yeah. You know, multiples and they want to, you know, but, <laughs> but, you know, there are, I think the the smartest ones recognize that, oh, you know what, the, this community, even though they are also shareholders, they're the customers, you know, they yeah. are the consumers and the customer of, this company and just like you're you you know um nicely put they are de-risking this mm -hmm. company you yeah. know they are and i you know i've talked to a lot of my venture capitalist friends i mean legion or moby tv raised a lot of vc money that i think this combination i think the smartest venture capitalists out there and are starting to recognize that this isn't a threat to them. I mean, some people consider it a threat, like this whole idea that, oh, anyone can be a venture capitalist. Oh, and all these communities can invest in these startups. And, you know, that could that could threaten a VC firm, I guess, um, because it means now that entrepreneurs like us have, have other alternatives to venture mm -hmm. capital. But I think the smartest ones will recognize that those are the safest bets. Yeah, because they've already been vetted by the by the marketplace. They already have other co investors, you know. And I think I think we'll probably start seeing a lot more of that. Where mm -hmm. you know, even some of these um, you know big uh, companies that are on their on a trajectory towards an IPO mm -hmm. will do some equity crowdfunding uh, yeah. to you know to add to the pot as a syndicated deal. You know, it'll be the private equity or the venture capital. They'll take the majority of it, but they'll carve off five million bucks and it'll go to, you know, the community. Or yeah. In our case, well, I mean, how many times have you watched Shark Tank and someone came in and said, oh, I put it on Indiegogo or Kickstarter. And then they say, oh, great. What did you learn from the community during that time? And then they invest in them after that, because there's so many learnings you can you can you can acquire basically from having this many fans that are giving you feedback on a regular basis. And, and I'm sure there are there are fans uh, of your platform and investors. I call them fans, but like investors on your platform that have looked at films and said, you know, I don't really like that one as much, but I love this one. And it's not that you're going to say like, oh, no, they didn't like you know, one of our options, it's like, oh, yay, thanks for giving us a heads up if before we actually people pitch it. Said that, we yeah. Were, yeah, exactly. If enough people weren't interested, we would, we would dodge the bullet, you know, yeah. like we really do listen, you know, we don't like the data doesn't drive every decision, but it's, it's a factor in every decision. Let's put, put yeah. it that way. Yeah. And, you know, and by this point, you know, one of the coolest things about Legion M and about our community, and we're so grateful to the people that we have in the, I mean, we have people in our community that have tattooed our logo on their body and, <laughs> you know, and they get the Legion M license plate. And oh my gosh, we're so grateful because it, and, and they are so supportive. You know, one of the things that like one of our concerns when we started it is that we might be in this narrow band. Right, that we have a community of people, and the kind of content they want is is very specific, and it would make it hard to 
you know, move outside that, that lane that we just, and that, that would be fine. And that would be like an interesting company, but it would be confined to maybe it was just horror. We only did mm-hmm. horror. But the thing that we've learned by polling our community is they are massively open to things that we didn't expect them to be. I yeah. mean, one of our, one of our probably, probably a project at Legion M that our community is most excited about is a historical action pic- picture. Like who would have thought, and, <laughs> but it's got a purpose and the reason, you know, and they have a reason and it came from them. You know, that project literally came from our community. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, we're, we're grateful and, um, you know, we still have a long way to go, but we're, we're excited. We'll, well see where this takes us. Thank you so much, Paul, for doing this. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I just had one final question. Who owns the Legion M vehicle? The Cadillac. <laughs> the community owns it. It's literally, it's owned by the company. It's beautiful. And yeah. You know, it's funny because, you know, we get mixed reviews on the cat. Most people love it. And, you know, it comes to Comic-Con and now it's an icon and in pop culture. And what what's so great, like when we first announced the Cadillac and showed it, we already had it, I think, when we like it was already part of our marketing propaganda when yeah. when we introduced the company. Um, but, you know, we'd have some investors saying like, well, why, 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 why do we have an old, you know, 59 Cadillac? That doesn't <laughs> seem like a good use of money. <laughs> but the, but if you think about it, it it actually is because that car, first of all, when we bought it, it was not expensive. Yeah. Um, second of all. Most marketing expenses, if you're going to spend 25, 30 grand on a marketing expense, yep. you're done. You spent it, you know, that con's over. You you don't have it anymore. This car appreciates in value every year. Yeah. So it's an investment. And now it's more famous than it ever was when <laughs> we first bought it. Now this car is famous. If we did an auction for that car, it would sell for way more than we bought it for. and it's, I mean, it pays for itself over and over. If we bring it to a Comic-Con, you know, they don't, they just want it there. They like, you know, Silicon Valley Comic-Con lets us park it in the lobby yeah. for free. I saw and that. So we I was have like, all wow. this like free advertising, people walking by, but it's a, it's a cool iconic looking car that, that people want to have around. No, I think that was smart because actually it was the car that caught my attention in the video when you first yeah. <laughs> watched the company. I was, like, I was like, who's driving up in this car? Like, it. what is this all about? So, but you know, truthfully, we're literally, I mean, like we could almost, um, you know, you know, rally road, like how you can kind of co-own, like, you know, the Declaration of Independence, like yeah. literally that car, that's how we think about it. It is owned by our whole community. That's awesome. You know, everybody owns a little piece of it. If you come to a Comic-Con and you see that car, if you're an investor, you get to sit in it, you can get to, you know, take pictures with it, do all that stuff. Like you're a part owner of that car. That's awesome. Well, hey, Paul, why don't you let everyone know how they can get a hold of you or research Legion M or potentially being an investor? And then I will, uh, we'll close off here. Sure. Absolutely. So yeah, you can find pretty much everything about the company at legionm.com. It's L-E-G-I-O-N M as in million.com. And, uh, you know, our, our social handles are, uh, Legion M official, uh, across pretty much all of them. And, um, if anyone ever wants to reach out, they can, they can send an email. If you send an email to team at Legion M, and if you're asking for someone specific, uh, like me, um, you know, just put my name in it and it'll, it'll get to me. We do get a lot of inbound. We do, you know, we're very responsive, I think on our email, Sometimes, you know, if something gets directed to me or Jeff, sometimes we're we're just swimming in it. So we try to, you know, respond as much as possible. But, um, you know, sometimes we don't we don't get to all of it. But but Brandy and our team are really responsive. Um, And the last thing I want to mention is um, you don't need to invest in Legion M to join. You can join Legion M for free, uh, you know completely risk-free. So, and one of the reasons we did that is we really want people to A, understand what they're getting involved in. And B, we didn't want them to feel like, oh, they had to give their money before they could, you know, learn more about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
and in particular, like uh, pretty soon, you know, we're we're ending round eight right now. And so we won't have a round open until we open round nine. So the only thing to do is uh, you can join. And once uh, and once we open round nine, then we'll let you know. I think there will be like a waiting list where you can sign up or make a reservation for for round nine. And, you know, the last round sold out and then we increased the cap and sold that out. And so um, that round was one of our, our biggest and fastest rounds we've ever had. So. Yeah, that that one was huge. So, congrats on yeah. that for sure. Like, and that and that ended up qu- pretty quickly. Well, thank you everyone for taking the time to listen to us today. We really appreciate it. We'll be posting links to many of the sources that we referenced on Twitter, so you can find us and follow us at Twitter on Twitter at the X Podcast One. That's the X Podcast Number One. If you like this podcast and found it interesting or informative, it helps us a great deal if you subscribe or leave a review on whatever platform you. Thanks everyone, and we will see you all next week.